Today's episode is sponsored by PetFlow and supported by our patrons on Patreon. You've got to get your dog's food and you care about modern humane dog training. Make sure your dog always has their food whenever they need it by having it automatically shipped to you from PetFlow and know that you're supporting the dog training revolution too. Just go to the link in the description below, choose your dog's food, they've got all the good ones, and tell PetFlow how often you want it delivered. Enter code ZAK30 when you check out and you'll get $10 off your first three automatic shipments. Click thumbs up for Tiberius, the nine week old puppy. Subscribe to my channel. And if you've got a new puppy, pick up a copy of my book. You won't regret it. You won't believe how differently dogs take in the world. And better understanding how they perceive the world is gonna make you a better trainer. I think he's waking up. Look at this. This is what he looks like conscious. Okay, maybe not. Now you've probably heard that dogs see the world in black and white, but that's not exactly true. There's two dogs in here. Can you see the colors? Dogs can be tested for color blindness just like people can. By being trained to identify objects which are a different color. <laughs> can you see the green one? And using tests like this combined with our knowledge of eye anatomy, we can determine which colors dogs see and which they don't. You're supposed to tell me if you can see the green. You're not supposed to eat the colorblind test. Dogs can see blue and yellow and white and gray, but red, green, and yellow all basically look the same to them. Have you ever wondered why dogs get zombie eyes when light shines? shines in their eyes when it's dark or when you take a picture of them. Dogs in the wild are crepuscular hunters. They see best in dim light at dusk and dawn. This is aided by their tapetum lucidum, which is what causes the zombie eye effect. A dog's vision is about three times blurrier than ours, and because of this, dogs are much better at recognizing objects when they're moving. When you're playing with your dog, for example, if you and the toy are more animated during the process, well, your dog is a lot more likely to be enticed by you. And it's easier for dogs to make out individual people from farther away when the person is moving. So if, for example, you're trying to get your dog's attention on you from far away, try moving around a little bit and you're a lot more likely to get them to come to you. Sometimes it doesn't work as planned. If you've ever wondered if your dog can see things on TVs or displays, the answer is yes, especially on higher definition televisions. The way dogs really see the world though is with their noses. Dogs can detect scent in shockingly small amounts, up to 100 million times less concentrated than we can with our human noses. Their sense of smell sometimes is so stimulating that it's hard for them to focus on you. That's why it is so important to get your dog used to all of the smells of the world before you can reasonably expect them to listen to you in the presence of those smells. Dogs have a much bigger mental and physical capacity for analyzing and remembering scents than we do. Bottom line, their overall physiology allows them to collect higher concentrations of any given scent. So when your dog is smelling the wind, they're actually gathering information about things that are happening farther away, like maybe a neighbor's dog is approaching, for example. They also have a special organ in their nose that allows them to detect hormones like pheromones that animals naturally release too. And this is fascinating. Dogs can smell with each nostril independently independently. In other words, they smell in stereo. That combined with their wet nose really allows them to detect which direction a smell is coming from. Dogs are getting an amazing picture of what goes on in your neighborhood when you allow them to sniff around on a walk. They can even smell the difference between morning and afternoon. I mean, it's like they can tell time with their nose. So when you're training your dog, embrace their incredible nose. This is one reason that using lure training and good treats can give you an advantage. Be sure to let them have extra time to sniff around next time you're on a walk too. As you probably guessed, a dog's ability to hear is vastly superior to ours. In fact, a fully developed dog can hear things up to four times farther away than we can. If your dog has ever gone crazy when you turn on a vacuum, it could be because they hear a really high-pitched sound from the motor that our human ears can't detect. And dogs' ears can tilt and rotate to really zero in on where a sound is coming from much more efficiently than we can. Now, as far as taste goes, well, dogs aren't as sensitive to taste as we are. See, they've only got about 1,700 taste buds compared to our 9,000. How you like that? Finally got something on you. Interestingly, dogs do have one special taste ability, though, that we don't have. They have taste buds specifically tuned for water. These water taste buds are concentrated on the tip of your dog's tongue, which is the part they use to lap up water. It doesn't taste like anything. How can you taste this? So dogs can taste sweet, salty, sour, bitter, meat, and fat, and it turns out water too. 
Dogs may have another very interesting sense, the ability to detect Earth's magnetic fields. Recently, a molecule associated with this ability was found inside the eyes of dogs. While there's not yet enough definitive evidence to say that dogs can detect magnetic fields, it is the same molecule that's been associated with this ability with other mammals and birds. You're not supposed to eat the magnetic field, you're supposed to see it. Plus, a study suggests that dogs may prefer to orient themselves on a north-south axis when they pee and poop. Ty, why is that so important to you? So much still to learn. As for touch, well, dogs feel touch much like we do, but they have special whiskers above their eyes, below their jaw, and on their muzzle. These whiskers are thicker and deeply embedded in their skin and have a huge number of receptor cells attached to them. This helps dogs avoid things that might hit their face or their eyes and just generally helps them be aware of what's around their face. It's pretty amazing how well dogs and people hit it off when we have so many differences. Click thumbs up for dogs everywhere and of course for Ty. He did a great job today, didn't he? Subscribe to my channel Thanks for supporting content like this on Patreon and set up automatic pet food delivery with PetFlow and get $10 off your first three orders by entering code ZAP30. All those details are in the description. Hey Ty, good job, buddy.